Hi, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have what's called a combined series review and my cat just walked under my tripod. Um, I write for my blog what's called series reviews and out of curiosity I went down to my tags on my blog and discovered that I have done 35 of these which includes this one here and uh, my cat just won't mess stop messing with my tripod um, what I want to tell you is for right now while I'm talking I will have inserted the image for the nine books that I will be talking about in this video but before I start I just want to kind of tell you what I like to do on my blog um, I am a huge series fanatic um, as a matter of fact, uh, barnesandnoble.com in their review uh, description of you as a reader, that's what I always pick. So I got these two arcs last year, um, this one first, Into the Fire, and then I got Prodigal Son. So I got these two arcs last year because I'm in the Minotaur Early Readers Program or Readers Program, and... I'm trying to see there I don't see a letter so I was going to show you what the letter looks like and so I get an, e an email every month and I'm allowed to select five or seven different print arcs and as many digital arcs as I want and this looked really interesting to me and what's more though is that it's part of a series and since I'm a series fanatic I had to go back I chose to go back of course I did not have to I chose to go back and tried to find all the previous books in the series and read them in order and that's just something that I'm um, sorry I got a cat up here now that's just something that I like to do for my blog and I think if I'm not mistaken this might be the first big combined series review I am doing on this channel now I think I did do uh, a couple of reviews from a, the Nikki Hunt series by Stacy Green a week or so ago, but those were individual reviews on my blog. Whereas if you go to my blog, and I will link this in the description below, you will see, a, what's the best word? You'll see the reviews in order by title. I can't, I can't think of the word that I want to use. So that's just a little bit of a background as to why I am doing this video and what those uh, nine images in this screenshot mean and how they relate to this, to this video. So, like I said, I got those two print arcs for review and when I was on, the, on Goodreads deciding if I wanted to choose um, Into the Fire and Prodigal Son, I saw that it's part of the Orphan X series, which I had not read any of the books. And so I go to Hoopla or to Overdrive and even to Scribd if I have to. And in one case, I went to Amazon and bought one and I got all the books in the series. So I started the series back in September. I read a couple in September, one in October and one in November. And then I didn't read any more again until this week. And then I read all the rest in the last couple of days. So that's a long history, and let's get into this review. Now, I am pulling up the first cover of the first book in the series, which is Orphan X. Now, the Orphan X series by Greg Hurwitz, all of these books are published by Minotaur, which is an imprint of St. Martin's Press. Well, just think of Jack Reacher meets MacGyver and you'll have an idea who our hero is in this Orphan X series. And I'm going to just read you the first paragraph of the description of Orphan X, and it says, the nowhere man is a legendary figure spoken about only in whispers. It's said that when he's reached by the truly desperate and deserving, the nowhere man can and will do anything to protect and save them but he's no legend. So that's the first part of the description of the first book, Orphan X. This is where we meet Evan Smoke, S-M-O-A-K. 
He is a man with skills, resources, and a personal mission to help anybody that needs his assistance. But really, who is he? Well, when you start this series, and I recommend reading it in order because Evan achieves a lot of growth as the series goes book by book by book. And you're going to get a little bit of that in this review. So Evan has mentioned in, and just a minute ago, I mentioned that he's called the nowhere man, but he's also known as orphan X. Now, Evan, I'm not very comfortable because I've got a cat on me. Um, Evan is known as, I'm sorry, Evan was abandoned as a baby and eventually he was found and housed in a program of young, mostly young boys that were trained to be killing machines. Now, this was a black ops government program. Yes, it was sanctioned by the U.S. government and it was referred to as the orphan program and all of these trained assassins were called Orphan A, Orphan B, Orphan C, so forth and so on. Well, Evan came late in the program, which is why he was called Orphan X. After years of training, Evan made his first kill when he was 19 years old. Ten years have passed, and he's killed multiple, multiple people at the behest of the government. But he's chosen to leave the program. And because he chose to leave the program, he's now in a run for his life. The reason why is that um, I see a typo in the first review, so I'm fixing it right now. The reason why is no one gets away from this program. Um, once you're in it, you're in it for life. And if you try to leave it, it won't, it won't come easy for you. And that's exactly what Evan learns. So, now he's being trailed by someone who has the same skills that match the ones that he was trained with. Meanwhile, as we're going to find out later in the series, he's lost his handler father figure, who is Jack. So now Evan is being chased and he's got to use this incredible skill and his sharp wit to try to stay alive, but to achieve the mission that he has in his mind to help others, to help anybody in need. Now, as we get to know Evan, we learn certain things about him. One, I might have mentioned his skill. I know I said his wit, but he has an extreme case of OCD. This OCD not only affects how he lives in his apartment and the way his apartment is designed, but it's also it also affects how he handles each individual circumstance, case, killing, protection, whatever. Um, also he was raised in this program, in this orphan program, there was a list of commandments. For example, one of the commandments is never let an innocent die. So it is those values and those commandments that guide Evan, even once he leaves the program and in a kind of, kind of in a humorous sense, but this kind of plays into different parts of the series is he has a, a great love of vodka. You can't forget that. And in the first book of the series, we meet a character. I won't mention that character's name now. I'll mention it a little bit later. But we meet a character that comes into the series from time to time. And I enjoyed seeing that character because it gives us a little bit of a, a more rounded opinion as to who Evan was. Now, of course, this is an action-packed, gadget-filled, and exciting book in the first book of the series from the beginning to end. I think it was a great introduction to a, a, a thrilling series and especially for me because I don't read a lot of adventure and I don't read a lot of action. I mean, I've read a couple of Jack Reacher books. I, 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 can, I know there's another action uh, book or series I read last year. So this isn't a series or a genre that I reach for, but I really, really enjoyed this book. And like I said, I read this one back in September. And then the next book in the series was By a Bullet, and By a Bullet was only an 83-page novella. Now, just out of, out of just to mention, um, Orphan X came out January 2016, and the next book in the series didn't come out until January 2017, which is a year later. So a little bit past halfway in that time frame, this novella, which is up on the screen, By a Bullet came out. 
And again, it was only 83 pages. And what is this little novella about? Well, this tells us a little bit more about how Evan became part of the program in his very first outing as the Nowhere Man. And it's a quick story of how Evan meets a woman in a coffee shop and he can look in her eyes and sense that she's in danger. So he does what he can to alter her circumstances to save her, to rescue her. And that's, that's who Evan is. A quick 83 page novella, have it, have a sandwich, a cup of coffee, and you'll be done with it, but you'll be glad you read it. Then we move on to book number two in the series, which is the Nowhere Man. It's in, um, it's 369 pages. So it's a full book. And in the uh, description of each book in the series on Goodreads or Amazon, it reminds us who Evan is. As a boy, he was ch taken to a, uh, from a children's home after being abandoned from a baby, pulled into a program, trained to be a government assassin, got burnt out, and left the program. That's who Evan was. So when this book picks up, The Nowhere Man, it's been 10 years of killings sanctioned by the US government. And now Evan, there's two things that have happened. One is the, the uh, program has been disbanded, uh, disbanded. But before the program itself was disbanded, Evan left it. And because he left it, his life was in jeopardy. So basically he's out on his own. And now his goal in life is to help whoever needs help along the way. If somebody gets in touch with him, he's there to help them. So this book, however, opens with Evan waking up in a drugged stupor in a locked room after being ambushed. Now, not only does he have that exceptional, exceptional skill that we, we, we've learned about if we read the first couple of books in the series, Wait, is this? Yeah, this is book three. In the first couple of books in the series, um, we know that he's smarter than smart. He has great deductive skills, but he also has a lot of gadgets. And one of the gadgets that he always keeps with him is an untraceable gadget called the Rome Zone phone. Rome Zone phone. Evan has still has this phone on his person, although he's been captured and he gets contacted and it's something like, I, I forget his tagline, but when he answers the phone, it's like, how can I help you? Or something along that line, or do you need my help? I wish I remembered the exact tagline. So now Evan has to escape. How is, is he going to overcome the effects of the drug, get from behind a locked situation and go help save the lives of others. Now, he helps a couple of different people in this case. For example, a teenage girl that's trying to escape a sex trafficking operation. Then there's another woman who requires his assistance and Evan does anything and everything he can to rescue her as well. While all of this is going on, getting out of that room, helping these young women, the action stays at a fever pitch, the intensity the 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 drive to see what Evan can accomplish under any circumstance and I've already said the word thrilling I'll probably say it again in this review but this is a thrilling series I love seeing Evan get himself out of precarious situations but I also love getting to know more and more about him as I read each book in the series so even though every book gives you an introduction about who Evan is how he ended up being becoming what he was and what he's doing now with his life. You could read those as standalones, but I am a serious person and I say read it from the beginning because Evan evolves over the course of the series. And to me, that's very important. Uh, continuity is something that I am very, very keen on. So we're moving in to book four and I, I hope I'm calling out these books properly because we have novellas. So, uh, no, actually, yeah. Orphan X was book one. Uh, Buy a Bullet was 1.5. The Nowhere Man, the one I just talked about, was book two. And now we're talking about book three. Now we're going into Hellbent. 
and Hellbent is actually like I was trying to call the third book in the series, whereas Nowhere Man was the second book in the series. So what happens here? We don't have to talk about who Evan was because by now you already know if you've been following this video. So what happens here is Evan, this is the book where we see how Evan lost his mentor. But we also see who was behind, and his mentor's name was Jack, but we also learn who was behind that murder. And that was the, the program's director, Van Scriver, or is it Skyver? Van Skyver. He's behind Jack's murder, and Jack was Evan's mentor, so Evan goes after him. Meanwhile, because Evan is free from the program with a goal to help as many people as possible, Von Skyver sends another orphan after Jack, and this orphan is Orphan Y. So, I mean, I said F Jack, I mean Evan. So you got Evan is after Von Skyver. Von Skyver sends a hitman who is Orphan Y after Evan. So it's really a game of cat and mouse. Now, while Evan is involved in trying to get to Von Skyver and trying to stay alive, he was gifted with a 16-year-old girl named Joey Morales. She actually failed the program and she is a computer hacker and a programmer and Evan becomes her guardian and her protector. Now, she becomes part of Evan's life in a big way, and I love the introduction of Joey into this series. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago that there was another character who came in on book one, but I wanted to wait to get to this book, and that character is Prosecutor Mia Hall. There's times that she helps Evan, and there's times that they are at cross purposes. But the two have a connection. And by the way, Mia has a young son named Peter. They actually live downstairs from Evan. And you can kind of see their relationship evolving. You can kind of sense some romance on the horizon. But Evan is a killer and Mia is a prosecutor. So that's the part of the cross purposes that I mentioned. But with Joey and Mia and Peter and some of Evan's other neighbors in the building he lives in, we get to see more and more of Evan's human side. I love that. I love that because you've got this exceptional stone cold killer, but he's not a stone cold, cold killer. He's a human being with morals, emotions, principles and the whole nine yards. Now a little bit more about Joey. She's smart, she's resourceful, but she's got a shell around her. She wants to become a machine. She wants to be the person that Evan was before he left the program. So Evan doesn't want her to be that person. So she's humanizing Evan and Evan is guiding her and it's a great interchange as a matter of fact their relationship becomes so father daughter like that one of the things that made me laugh every time I read this uh, while I was reading this book is when Joey would let loose with certain words and Evan would say language and I just love that I loved it so as um, another thing I that I that I threw in this written review is Evan's apartment is a veritable fortress. It's got, you know, a secret room. It's in, it's kind of like, it's a very, very intense apartment. And also it houses all the vodka Evan, Evan could ever need for a lifetime. So I loved this book. I really did. I gave it four stars, but as much as I'm talking about it now, I should go ahead and give it five. Then we read another novella. And this, again, like, uh, there's about a year gap between releases. I don't know what kind of truck that is outside. There's about a year gap between releases. So every now and again, the hopefully it's not too loud. I'm sorry. Every now and again, 
the author or publisher will throw in a novella to tide readers who were reading this book series as it was coming out. And so they did that with the intern. Now the intern was quick, quick, quick. Um, it says on Goodreads that it's 84 pages, but in all actuality, the intern was really one chapter and the better part of the novella was a sneak peek into the next book in the series. But a little bit of history or a, a quick, quick, excuse me, a quick, quick summary about the intern is uh, Evan is working to save an intern that was pulled into a difficult situation. So not much to say about this, but that is the intern. Toby's going to see what in the world that noise is. So now I can sit up because my cat's not on me. Okay, so then we have the next book in the series, and that's a full book, and it's called Out of the Dark. And that one came out in January 2018, and we get to see even more about Evan on a different level. Because in this book, Evan has a goal, and that goal is to assassinate the President of the United States. Yes, he's determined to kill the President, but why? Well, as we learn, President Bennett was actually the man who oversaw the Black Ops operation that has long since been dis uh, disbanded, and so Evan, in, in all senses, as he became Orphan X, answer to the president. Yes, there was a director, Von Skyver, which we talked about earlier, but now, I'm going to check the time, sorry. Now, Evan is going after the head of the snake, so to speak, and that is President Bennett. Now, as we talked about, you know, the program had been disbanded. Uh, Evan has a goal of doing whatever he can to, um, to protect any and all, um, I'm sorry, I noticed that in my review I said Bennett is trying to help as many people as possible, but it's Evan, so I'm just fixing that on my blog. So Evan is determined to um, save as many people as possible, but at the same time, he's in this fight by, he's in this fight to, to destroy the president. Now, he gets a lot of help from his protege, jo Joey, we talked about her. She's a gifted hacker and programmer, and she helps Evan to find out information that he wouldn't be able to find on his own. We also see how Evan remains friends with his neighbor, who is single mother and prosecutor, Mia Hall, and his tight bond with her son, Peter. And then we also see that, like in other books, uh, how Bond Skyver had sent um, Orphan Y after Evan in a previous book. Well, we see now that uh, the president has sent another orphan after Jack, and that is Orphan A, who was the program's very first recruit. So now we see Orphan A with exceptional skills and Jack, Orphan X, with exceptional skills and resources. So the question is, who will come out on top? And will uh, Evan get to his goal of killing the president? Now there's a, something that was kind of aside in this book that I enjoyed, and I don't read many political thrillers. No, this is not a political thriller. It's an action adventure series, but there's things about the presidency and regarding his security, his detail, and his protection that I learned in this book. And I'm not going to tell you what those things are, but they were kind of cool to learn. So that was something that made this book stand out just a little bit more for me. And I also loved the father-daughter relationship that Evan and um, Joey have. And I love um, how Joey is becoming softer and less reserved and how Evan's human side comes out and this also uh, is again seen in his relationship with like Mia, Peter, and other neighbors in the building he lives in. With all of that, we still have that same exciting pulse, uh, pulse thrilling, or no, that's not a word. We still have that exceptional action, that intensity, that uh, fast moving, fast paced story that we've been reading in the entire series. Loved this book. Then we move on to book number five, 
which was Into the Fire, and a, another full-length novel. And in this book, we learn that Evan gets a call on his Rome Zone phone, that gadget, that untraceable phone. From he, this call, he gets from a man named Max Merriweather. Now, Max Merriweather's circumstances rather quickly are he's recently separated. He loves, loves, loves his wife, but she can't even stand to look at him. His cousin, Grant, has been killed brutally. And his cousin has given him something to say, if something ever happens to me, give this to a, a reporter. Then Max's apartment is ransacked because of whatever he was given to by Grant. And the reporter that Max was supposed to give this package to is missing. So Max is out of options. He knows about Orphan X. I love how he learns about Orphan X actually. And I'm gonna, I didn't put this in my review, but I'll tell you about it quickly here. Is there's an autistic savant character. I, I wanna say his name is Teddy. I didn't write it down. In this book and he's at a coffee shop and he says to Max, he goes, this is kind of like a cafeteria. Can I sit next to you? And Max is like, okay. And so the savant sits next to him and he looks at him. He goes, you're sad. And Max is like, no, I'm not. And he goes, yes, you are. So I, I, I love that interchange. I don't know why I remember that in such detail, but I love that interchange. Well, this savant knows about uh, Evan so he gives Max Evan's Rome Zone number, and that's how Max contacts Evan. That is not in my written review, but I thought I would mention it here. So Evan eagerly steps in to help Max, despite the fact that he's being, you know, chased by Orphan A, despite the fact that he still wants to kill the president, or wait, da, 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 da. no, no, that was another book, okay. Evan, so I'm sorry, talking about all these books in order. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, Max steps in to help. Uh, Evan steps in to help Max. And Evan finds out rather quickly, yes, Joey's helpful with her computer skills, that an Armenian gang is involved. So Evan quickly deals with that gang. But Evan's, excuse me, Max's problems don't stop. Max is still being chased by killers. So Evan has to do whatever he can to continue to help Max. Now there is something else that happens in this book that I really, really like, and it plays into some of the scenarios that happen in future, in the, in the rest of this book and in the next book in the series, is Max comes across a dog fighting outfit and he rescues a bait dog. And a bait dog is a dog that is a bit weaker that the more, I don't know a lot about this, but more skilled dogs can easily kill. So Max rescues this dog, takes this dog to the vet, and eventually takes the dog and gives it to Joey. Joey's like, I don't want this dog. As a matter of fact, dog becomes dog. Dog never even gets a name. His name is dog. I love that transition of seeing what happens with dog. I just want to say that. So anyway, Max is continually surrounded by danger and whether or not um, he is able to keep Max alive remains to be seen. We get to see a little bit more about his relationship with Mia and her son Peter and we get to wonder if that will ever go anywhere. Really, really exciting. The fact that Greg Hurwitz can keep doing this book after book after book. And you know, I'm, I'm showing you the digital arc on uh, the screen, but you know, I did get this as a hardcover arc. Um, anyway, it was a great book. Um, e each book uh, has a measure of humor in it, um, a measure of the, the human part of it where we see Max's human side. We see Max's uh, psychological issues when it comes to his OCD. We see Max when he's hurt, when he's strong. I just love it. And above all, we see Max's concern and protectiveness towards Joey growing 
with each book. Excellent, excellent book in the series. I absolutely loved it. Then we have another novella, and that was called The List. And I loved The List. This one was more about Joey. It was probably 98% of it was about Joey. Now, Joey's only 16 years old, but she's in college. And when she's on campus, she sees that a young woman is about to take her life. And, and Joey tries to save this woman, but she fails. So she's heartbroken. Why wasn't I able to save this woman? And why did she take her life? Well, Joey uncovers that this woman was desperate due to a document that was called The List. The List was something that was being used on campus by the males to rate females' sexual prowess and skill. Well, you know, Joey is not going to stand for this list. She does what she can to get to the bottom of whoever's behind this list, put this list to an end, and we get to see Joey in her stride. I love Joey's relationship with Matt, uh, with Evan. She calls him X, and um, we just this book was a really great addition to the series. Only 94 pages, I think, but I loved it. I really, really loved it. Then we move on to the last book of the series and the last book of this review. And I am going, so I don't have to hold this book up for 10 minutes or five minutes. I am going to put the screenshot up there, but it's Prodigal Son. Now this is uh, an advanced reader's edition, but it, w it came out as a hardcover, but I got like, this one came as a hardcover arc, but this one came as just a marketing edition for me to, to read. But for the sake of the video, I'm sticking the book cover up on the screen. So what happens in Prodigal Son? Oh my gosh, my favorite book in the series. In this book, Evan gets a call from his mother, okay? His mother gave him up when he was only a week old. So Evan is like, oh my gosh, I've got to meet this woman. And it's not easy. It's actually quite sensitive, quite emotional, quite touching because she tells him about what happened when he was born and why she gave him up. But she didn't just get in touch with Evan to reconcile. She asked him to help someone that's named Andrew Duran. Now, Andrew Duran, a uh, Duran, sorry. Andrew has managed to attract the attention of a brother and sister assassination team. And if Evan doesn't step in and help Andrew, he won't make it, he won't survive. So when that Rome phone call, phone, when that Rome phone ring, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it one more time. When that Rome phone rings, Evan is at the ready to use his skills and his wit and his resources to help whoever's on the other end of that. Now, his OCD really comes out in this book because Andrew is an alcoholic, lives in slovenly conditions, and Evan tries to help him. And as Evan tries to help him, even though OCD is a very, very, very serious thing that I'm not making light of, there's a little bit of humor in there because Evan cannot believe that anybody could live the way that Andrew lives. And there's something else about Andrew that's quite sensitive. And that is that Evan, excuse me, Andrew is separated from his daughter. I think her name is Sophia. And um, we learn about why Andrew doesn't feel good enough to be about around Sophia. So that comes into the story. So as reluctant as Evan is to be close to Andrew, they, the two start to develop a connection anyway. And then, you know, we learn a little bit more about Joey and the fatherly role that Evan plays towards Joey. And I just found this book to be much more personal and sentimental than any of the other books in the series, but it, it still kept that excitement, that action, that pulse. Oh, why can't I think of a word every time I want to use a word? That nail-biting tension. We'll just use that word. I loved it. And there was also something else in this book and it was called, they were like, the book is big on gadget. The series, the entire series is big on gadgets. Well, this, the particular gadgets, one of the gadgets in this series were called micro drones 
and these micro drones looked like dragonflies. And I kind of, when I saw the micro drones and what Evan did, it kind of made me laugh. Um, Ev Ev the more we read about Evan, the more his softer, his more human side comes out. And that definitely happened in this book, especially with Evan meeting his mother, his uh, growing relationship with Andrew, what, how he draws closer to Mia and her son Peter, and of course, how he interacts with his daughter Joey. Loved it, loved it. Um, it had a thrilling finale. It got me eager, eager, eager for the next book in the series. I will check my email every single month. And as soon as Minotaur says you can choose a book, this book, the next book in the series will come up. And believe you me, I will say, yes, I want it. I will get it and I will read it. And I will talk about it on this channel one of these days. Now, at the rate that these books come out, um, this one came out in January. So it probably won't be till January of 2022, but hey, It'll be here eventually, but that's it. Let's see how long have I been talking? 36 minutes, but it was well worth it. If you like action, adventure, excitement, if you ever watch MacGyver and you love watching Mac get out of his situations, if you read any Jack Reacher novels, um, who does, uh, there's another uh, character in, that does films. I don't watch a lot of movies. But if you like that type of excitement, this is a series for you. I hope I've captured your attention long enough in this video that you didn't shut me off because you're going to want to hear about every single book. That's it. Bye-bye. Oh, I should stop. I want to say two things. One is I'm going to link my blog post in the description. I'm, I'm going to also list each book in the description. I don't know that I'm going to go and grab all nine Amazon links again. I wish I had made them into a text document, but if you're interested in any of the books, I'll tell you two things. One is in my blog post, every link to Amazon is there. And number two is every, pretty much every book is available at your library. So support your local libraries. I just want to mention those things, but that's it. Bye everybody.